Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the <clears throat> nonprofit educational Break the Cycle website. I've been a family therapist for 31 years. I've been on the planet for 73 years. I've been the recovering son of two alcoholic parents since 1986. I am an ACOA, an adult child of an alcoholic family. I've studied addiction a lot. As a therapist, I've worked with many people who are affected personally and or relationally by addiction. <clears throat> In this video, I want to offer you some real key things that I've learned about the dynamic of addiction and how to best adapt to it. <clears throat> As you know, addiction is a harmful compulsion. <clears throat> a compulsion is a kind of physical action that cannot be controlled by willpower. It ranges from minor to major. For instance, some people have the compulsion, compulsion of washing their hands 20 times a day. You can debate whether that's harmful or not. Um, addiction is harmful psychologically, physiologically, and it hurts families and society. There are four kinds of addiction. <clears throat> they all operate the same way. Could you name all four? Many people can't. The most commonly known one is addiction to substances. Of the substances, two that are most familiar are ethyl alcohol <coughs> and food. Food is a drug. Food alters your brain and body chemistry. People become addicted to ethyl alcohol and to certain kinds of foods, including sugar and carbohydrates, which metabolize into certain brain-altering chemicals. So addiction to substances is perhaps the most widely known. Another kind of addiction that's prevalent is addiction to certain activities. For instance, do you know people who are workaholics? How about people who compulsively shop? How about people who gamble? How about people who work out? How about people who pray compulsively, excessively? People can become addicted to certain activities because they distract them from what's going on inside. A third type of addiction is to mood states. Do you know anybody that's been called a rageaholic? How about someone who is addicted to sexual excitement through pornography or actual sexual activity? How about people who are addicted to religious ecstasy? People who seek a spiritual kind of disassociation from the real world. People can come, become addicted to that kind of uh, altered state with or without uh, using chemicals. So people can become addicted to moods, certain moods. <clears throat> the last thing that we can become addicted to <clears throat> is relationships. Since the 1980s, people have started to become familiar with the commonplace dynamic of codependence that came originally from the term co-alcoholic, which meant someone who was addicted to an alcoholic's behavior. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> so, there are four kinds of addictions. They're widespread, they're universal, throughout all ages, all cultures. There may be in your family, uh, in your community, in your church, certainly in your nation. How do you know a true addiction from some other kind of excessive behavior? There are two specific characteristics that are true of a real addiction. The first is denial, or more broadly, reality distortion. People who are really addicted to any of the four I mentioned characteristically say, no, I'm not addicted. That's your imagination. You're oversensitive. You're imagining things. 
more. They say, I can quit any time, I just don't want to. That's a reality distortion. A related distortion is minimization. Well, yeah, I have kind of a problem, but it's not that serious. Or, well, yeah, I have a problem, but it doesn't really cause too much trouble. Yes, it does. So, reality distortion is a common trait of any of the four addictions. Reality distortion is one of six specific wounds that people who did not get their needs met well enough as very young children grow and exhibit. Reality distortion. There are five other psychological wounds that go with this. The second characteristic of all addictions, true addictions, is that they are progressive in frequency and intensity and impact. They get worse and worse over time. The reason is addictions are subconscious attempts to reduce inner pain. Paradoxically, they both do reduce inner pain reliably every time, every time. And yet, when the effects wear off, the pain comes back and it's worse. So inner pain is ref reflexive and it builds on itself. That's why true addictions are progressive. What is inner pain? Have you ever experienced inner pain? We all have. It's part of being human. Inner pain is some local mix of shame. I'm a, I'm a terrible, disgusting person. I'm unlovable. Guilt. Oh, I did wrong. I broke. I made a mistake. I broke a rule. Emptiness. I don't care about anything. Loneliness. I'm not connected to anybody. Sadness. I'm so sad. I lost something or other. These are common, inescapable sources of psychological discomfort. Put them together in some unique mix, and they can be globally called inner pain. Inner pain ranges from moderate to intense, and from situational to chronic. Chronic inner pain, which comes from having a traumatic childhood, motivates people to find any way they can to reduce it. Any of the four addictions <clears throat> are effective at reducing temporarily inner pain. Pause for a moment. I've just given you an awful lot of information here. Do you know someone that in your judgment is addicted? Do you feel you might be addicted to any of these four things? If so, how does what I've just told you affect you? You do not have a damaged personality, though you may be carrying psychological wounds. You do not have a disease. You are not sick. You're probably underestimating the significance of your toxic compulsion, or whoever you're focused on is underestimating theirs. Incidentally, a third characteristic of a true addiction is logic is of absolutely no value <clears throat> to controlling or moderating it. <clears throat> no degree of persuasion, of explanation, of pleading, of hinting will affect an addict because it does not, underline does not, affect their inner pain or their unconscious drive to reduce it. What it does do is create frustration for everybody and guilt and distrust. So don't bother trying to use logic with someone who is addicted. This is a pretty bleak picture, isn't it? The real issue, in my opinion, as a family therapist for 31 years and the son of two alcoholics, I've struggled with my own compulsions, by the way. I have all six psychological wounds from a traumatic childhood. 
so I'm speaking to you from the inside out. I've, I've been in the trenches here, as well as observed many, many other people struggling to free themselves from addictions and the impacts of addictions. What can be done? If you or a loved one, <clears throat> someone you're concerned about, has an addiction, the very first thing you can do is <clears throat> assess yourself for psychological wounds and free your true self to guide you. That may mean nothing to you unless you study Lesson 1 and the related YouTube videos in my website. Lesson 1 will explain how people with traumatic childhoods gain <clears throat> six psychological wounds, what the wounds are, how they manifest, what their symptoms are, and most importantly, how can you reduce psychological wounds, alias inner pain. Assess yourself for psychological wounds and commit yourself to reducing them if you have any. If someone you care about is, quote, addicted, <clears throat> look upon them with compassion as someone who has unbearable inner pain and doesn't know what to do about it. Alert them to the psychological wounds you can read about in Lesson 1. Invite them to ex explore reducing their inner pain by means other than a compulsion. It does work. There are effective things you can do to reduce inner pain. So study and use the knowledge in Lesson 1. It's free. There's no commercials attached. None at all. So the second thing you can do or you can invite your favorite addict to do is identify objectively sources, external sources of pain. That means <clears throat> Identify relationships which cause you excessive shame, guilt, fear, anger, loneliness, disappointment, frustration, sadness. Identify those relationships and creatively distance yourself from them because you're worth it. It is not other people's fault because people who create those feelings in you are themselves probably grown wounded children and they don't know it. I've just covered a lot of information here and I want to bring this to a close. My point in this video is to alert you to some fundamental facts about the widespread relationship and family problem called addiction. Education is the very first step in preventing or managing true addictions. I hope you'll think about and maybe replay this and apply it in your life or in the lives of people you care about. Study lesson one in my nonprofit website. Thanks for watching.